stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he and the soul felt its worth. Upon our planet, 
there is a circular blue sea upon which the golden radiance of the sun does shine and the azure light that pours forth from that sea is a radiance so fair that all who gaze upon it have a renewed sense in the simplicity of God. No complicating thoughts fill their mind, but only the unity of water and sky. Would you then, children of Terra, forsake now the thoughts that so frequently burden your blessed shoulders? Would you forsake those thoughts until the thuds of the burdens falling off can be heard on the ground all around where you sit or stand? Will you forsake your burdens? Let them go. Let them fall. And in the sweet and simple idea of this circular blue sea with the light of God shining upon it, and blazing forth the purity of the sacred fire through the crystal waters, azure blue, reflecting into your consciousness the simplicity of a little child, water and sky, the warmth of the sun and the coolness of the water. Your minds then, bathed in the purity of the water substance, are also aerated by the fires of the sun passing through the sunlit air. In the simple images, there are invoked such magnificent responses in the soul. For little children, when their dreams are young and tender, do not think of complex geometrical formulas. They do not dream of huge and complex psychological blocks in the subconscious realm, or they do not engage in perverse fantasies which so often occupy the minds of the more sophisticated of men. We believe upon our planet that with the coming of maturity, men should be more childlike and in this childlike attitude, better able to perfect and protect the purity of God ideas. We do not believe that maturity should bring complexity. We believe that it should result in a natural flow of simplicity in divine design. Those who complicate find their burdens increase. Those who simplify find their burden cease. For light itself is the perfect solution to all mankind's problems. And habits created by multiplying a simple thought process into an involved one so often become a chain to hold one back from the beautiful freedom they seek. Will you feel now then a special action as I initiate a contact between this earth and our planet, I am going to do something for you tonight that I will also share with the children of men, the planet round. I will feed my love into all the nations of the world. And I will, in perfect keeping with your beloved Saint Germain, the God of Freedom's idea, Consult the heart of God in the beautiful simplicity of that heart and the dream of perfection which he not only foreknew but which he holds inviolate, incorruptible within his entire consciousness. Can you imagine, blessed ones, what it means then to be a little atom of substance in the atmosphere or a cosmic ray piloting its way through space at incredible speeds, charged with a divine thought. Do you have any idea what it means to be a messenger of God, to be a messenger of a single solitary thought from his heart? Not 
an arrow of outrageous fortune, but an arrow of light that when it comes in contact with any substance, it produces the feeling of God happiness. And oh, how thirsty the world is today for happiness. How it longs to find peace at the end of a day of turmoil. How people's souls cry out for the peace of the chimes of the angelus. The day is ended. The heart is bowed in prayer. The harvest lays upon the ground. All mankind's fears and cares are found no longer there, but only love and peace abounds, a cosmic prayer breathed out in space. We then saturate the world tonight with a little beginning momentum of that which we are about to do. And as we start the quickening process in the hearts of these relative few who are here, we will see that you become seeds to scatter far and near this mead of heaven, this precious elixir that men may quaff, and in the quaffing thereof receive food and drink meat for their souls. The calmness of certain knowing of the Father's plan, the capitulation of the ego that has for so long held up its arms in a fight or flight mode, whereas God has solely desired to produce the abundant consciousness of heaven within the force field of men's being. Let your precious brains no longer then struggle. Let your being, your emotional bodies, no longer reach out in agony, but feel the will to release the flexing of the muscles of feeling, of consciousness, of being. And in this sweet release, know that repose, which is the repose of a flower as it is open from the bud, that yearns to drink in more of the sunshine and air. We would aerate your consciousness tonight. We would free your consciousness from all fear and blame, for blame is one of the great problems of the world. Whenever something goes wrong, someone is to blame. Oh, how man seeks to pin upon another the very responsibility which he himself should share with the whole world. I say then to you tonight, as you look into this calm pool of azure blue water, as you feel the golden radiance of the sun pouring down, let your whole body, each pore thereof, suddenly become a little miniature city of light, a city of purity and beauty where God is. In the center of each cell, the central soul now responds to glow. It glows and the water element suddenly responds with a feeling of gratitude for the kiss of the sun. And as the body cells are quickened each one and one by one, more and more of you become saturated with God reality. Oh, those fears shall vanish. They shall pass away in a holy conflagration of fire. For fire will melt. Fire will melt with a fervent heat. All of the ideas that man has had of failure. And he shall suddenly perceive that inasmuch as God did not want him to fail, why then should he fail? For the will of God is supreme. The will of God rules throughout nature. Why should the dream of God then be denied by an individual? Why should it be denied to an individual? Why should any man have fear that he will fail when God is in him? And if God is in the cell, then the cell must respond to the goodness that God is. And if the goodness that God is can penetrate all substance in the world and bring the power of his penetrability into the density of substance, then I believe that substance must relinquish its hold upon the dark shafts that have penetrated substance and created a caked condition whereby calcination will soon produce the bane of rheumatoids and all manner of other acts of pain in the force field of the flesh body and even in the substance 
of the mind. For the mind itself, with the approach of age, seems also to become calcinated and covered over with effluvia, layer upon layer of substance. And oh, because of the hardship and the struggle that men have engaged in, they feel from time to time that they cannot summon any more energy to fight the encroachment of calcination, of the enclosures of substance and banal ideas. And precious ones, how many amongst mankind are afflicted and affected by some member of their own immediate family. Now I am quite sure that you do not wish to become the affected or the afflicted one in that family. Understand then that wherever you are, when any challenge comes to you, it comes to you because energy has been imprisoned, dear hearts of light. And when energy is imprisoned, it cries out for deliverance. When men and women, therefore, have fear in their world, it means that they have somewhere along the line of life accepted fear. And because they have accepted fear, that fear has become a part of their consciousness to which they have given power and reality. Then that little concentration of energy that is the fear, that represents the fear, does manifest from time to time to poison the whole body of substance. For you see, all the light and all the power, all the energy that you use must always pass through these lower common denominators of substance in your world. Do you understand that when the light enters your world, it rushes first to the point of concentration. It rushes first to the point where negative energy and misqualification occur. And it always attempts to heal that which is lame, halt, and out of the way. Then you see, when the concentration is very great in some life streams, all of that great concentration must first be healed before the energy of light and of God can flow into the other cells that are already free and stimulate and release in them the power that will make the whole body glow with vibrancy, with health, and with reality. Do you see then, precious ones of the light, how humanity again and again by the acceptance of pain thoughts, by the acceptance of fear thoughts, by the acceptance of negativity projected at them by others, continue to create and recreate all of the substance that has kept them bound through the centuries. They will never know their freedom then unless they learn that the power of God must be invoked, that when it is invoked, it must be permitted to do its perfect work by going forward into the force field of their own body, of their own body of feeling substance, as well as the body of the mind, the mental portion of their being. When then they let this energy of God, this light of God that never fails, go forth and do its perfect work in them, it soon will stimulate the live cells still more until the vibrancy and beauty and energy of perfection can function in their world as it never functioned before. I am Sanat Kumar. I have stood and gazed upon the perfection of God in my beloved divine complement, the lovely Lady Venus. And I tell you, when you see the divine woman stand forth before you, the love that you feel increases a millionfold and onward into infinity. For truly a beautiful woman endowed by God with all of the fires of the soul is the perfect matrix into which his love does pour through you and produces the perfect fruitage of a daughter or a son of light. Do you understand then that here upon this earth in its present moment of evolution, the holy family is a very real aspect of divinity. Those then who are so inclined and to whom light has directed that they become fathers and mothers in the world, have the opportunity to become a part of the Holy Family through their own associations and exercising of opportunity to welcome incoming souls into a state of God magnificence where the glory of the presence can exercise its prerogative of directing and perfecting the youth that are then given into their care. Those who choose a life of celibacy and beauty devoted to God, they have covered their head with a snow-white radiance of purity. 
to them is given the opportunity then of evoking the Christ consciousness not only for themselves but for those who also have elected to bring forth and train children. Let all who devote their life to God in celibacy understand that they have a solemn responsibility to pray and serve the cause of those who are devoted to the bringing forth of children. I want you to understand that the teaching of the young, the right and glorious manifestations of good thought, of benign thoughts, the thoughts that can rightly be entwined with the flowers is the way in which a child should go. When the thoughts of a child cannot be entwined with the flowers, cannot be utilized in the weaving of garlands of hope, then something is wrong. For the child will grow up bent and inclined to selfishness and to pull into its own world material substance and gain, to seek sensation and pleasure in outer things. But those who are taught the meaning of the flowers of the spirit, they will identify with God. From them we will create the substance of which saints are made. I speak then of Teresa. I speak of Saint Teresa, whose joy and devotion to the Holy Presence has resulted in many healings throughout the world. And this is what we are interested in, is the creation of a consciousness of sainthood in men and women who may look anything but the part of a saint. For a saint does not appear as an outer manifestation. Many times the manifestation of a saint is a gentle fragility located within the consciousness. We find it sometimes in the roughest, and I say the toughest hewn surface consciousness. And we glory in the fact that whom God has blessed with the gift of sonship and sainthood, let no one then condemn. For God is in them, and he has raised them, and he has honored them, and he will respond to their prayers. Understand that man will accomplish not by outer things, but by inner activities of his being, the fullness of God's manifestation. Let all understand then that we, in coming forth to you, expect alertness on the part of every student of light to whom the privilege is given to hear our discourses. For we are concerned with developing in your hearts that perfect pattern, that perfect pattern of light that will always respond, that will always be quick and alert to discover whatever we are saying and to evaluate these points as a means to your obtaining your freedom. I tell you, beloved ones, we are considering today the problems of the world. We are considering the problems of the world that have troubled humanity for so many centuries. We know and we understand how the manipulators of the world have continually sought to control the mass mind. We are aware of the demoniac and diabolical forces that flow forth in the world. We are aware of the darkness in the world. We understand it, but we know that God is the victory over all of this darkness. We know that God is the victory over every darkness everywhere that God in you will keep you alert and awake to your responsibility, to your solemn responsibility, to understand and to fashion your consciousness as though you had in hand a chisel and were actually making out of the block of marble in its uncreated state a perfect statue, a perfect statue of beauty and glory from on high. We are now in a position where we are about to project a mighty ray of light to the planet Earth. And it is utterly necessary that every one of you shall be alert and awake so that you can participate in this glorious event as I am calling forth the seven holy Kumaras from our planet to transform their energy into one great transforming center and from that center to beam to the planet Earth a power of transcendent love that has not manifested upon this earth for over one million years. I want you to understand that the initial impulses of the deity sent forth to this earth were very great. That the love that God established on this earth in the beginning was so potent that to this day 
It is radiating and radiating and radiating throughout all nature and creating a continuance of all of the natural processes with the exception of those that have been aborted by human consciousness and through cosmic decree of the lords of karma. Let me then say to you tonight that we are ready to give a special impulse to this planet in order to literally inundate it with the power of transforming love. This energy which we are about to bring forth is evoked already by the calls of the students of light. We want you to know that the calls that you have made have borne fruitage, that the karmic board has already expressed in answer to your calls, a wish to evoke more light and more love upon this planetary body than it has ever before manifested. We consider also the possibility of just what that love would do to the earth. I want you to understand, beloved ones, that when love comes forth in mighty potency and it meets head-on human energy and misqualified substance, there is sometimes an eruption whereby that substance that is misqualified feels the need to release from itself all of the impositions that humanity have foisted upon it. The substance itself by the God-given native intelligence within itself must by cosmic law unburden itself of the rings of darkness that mankind have established around it. And when this occurs, sometimes it results in various natural cataclysms so-called by humanity. And they find then that conditions occur upon the planetary body that are not to the liking of humanity. It was not too long ago with the release of such light that a tremendous cataclysm occurred in South America as a warning to humanity. But I want you to take particular note that when that cataclysm occurred, we directed it according to our own wisdom and judgment to rather obscure and remote parts of South America for the simple reason that we wish to keep it away from the larger cities of the world where the same catastrophe would have resulted in a great deal more of confusion to the world and pain and suffering. Yet, take note also that very few among humanity paid any particular attention to it except a few in public office who desired to rush forth with some outer assistance to those poor and blessed people who received this initial outburst. Now that we are giving forth tonight a tremendous outpouring of cosmic light, I want you to understand that this is a great boon to the ascended master students of light because you, precious arts of light, can use this energy. If you will only be most careful as is allotted to you to see to it that you do not in any way misqualify this energy. When it comes to you, accept it in the chalice of your being as a great outpouring of cosmic Christ purity. Accept that energy as it is intended to be used for humanity and the uplifting of humanity by inundating every outer condition that is misqualified by dark substance with the love of God wherever you see it. When you walk down the street and you see people arguing in the marketplaces, ask your presence to release your specific momentum of allotted energy against that and see how more will rush into your being to replace that which you give forth. Watch how the activity flows forth and you will know that according to the needs of humanity, so God is meeting those needs. We want you to understand that as Jesus took in his hands the loaves and fishes and break it and fed the 5,000 multitudes, so we will also feed the millions and billions of this planet with light substance. And it can be done through you, for you will scatter yourselves across the face of the earth from time to time, being here and there. And you will remember that you have the power to project your energy as a light ray to any place upon the face of the earth when you are doing it for the sake of God's holy cause. Whenever, therefore, you are aware of outer binding and blinding conditions whereby humanity are in grave danger, Exercise, beloved hearts of light, the privilege given you tonight and call to your presence to direct that energy, that energy allotment from our planetary orb, Venus, into the world affairs of Terra and see that that light becomes a concentrated force. When all of you in this room and these rooms are correctly using your energy, what do you think it will mean to the hierarchy of light when we know that all of these people 
by directing their energy and attention and their allotment of that cosmic energy into the world of form. I tell you, it will give you an awesome sense of the responsibility which you have. And I want you to know, it will also bind you to us and to the cosmic hierarchy in cosmic service, whereby we can become a functional unit, one serving another and all serving together to free mankind. As this idea then spreads across the face of the earth and the energy allotments are proportionately distributed to humanity so that all of the people who serve the light throughout the earth become increasingly aware of the cosmic responsibility they have in the bending of mortal affairs toward the vine of immortality. As they become aware of the fact that humanity on this planet have a solemn right to exercise their privileges given them by God to become living Christ, to function as Christ did in the healing of the ills of humanity, I tell you that it will become most effective upon the planetary body. And mankind will finally become aware that there is a powerful force working for and on behalf of freedom here in this world of form. And then we hold a vision of humanity coming from the north, of humanity coming from the south, of humanity coming from the east, and humanity coming from the West and sitting down in the kingdom of God with the balm of love in their hearts and the power of transcendency overflowing the cup of life into their individual worlds and showing them the reason for purity, the reason for love to each other, the reason for fearlessness flame, the reason for healing, the reason for seeking to accept and know the will of God. All of this radiance, all of this power, all of this glory that is the glory of God will then literally inundate the world of form and mankind will find that the light of God that never fails will be as a great sea of love and light covering all nations with power and glory and enfolding all of them in that holy radiance that is the great Ultima Thule the final manifestation of love's perfection as it ascends to infinite dimensions. Do you understand the meaning of my words? Infinite dimensions, infinite dimensions, multiplying then the power of love upon itself and squaring it to the nth degree. Mankind will be able to geometrically produce such light as can be felt wherever it is needed. I tell you that mankind will rejoice then in the emancipation that is given to them. Now then, let us fix the coordinates. Let us fix the coordinate to the right. Let us fix the coordinate to the left. Let us fix the coordinate point of light to the rear. On this triad of light, let us tie in the grids and force fields of the holy Kumara. Flame of each Kumara radiate into the triad. Flame of each Kumara radiate into the triad. Flame of each Kumara radiate into the triad. The triad now glows. It glows with a violet pink light. Draw back the thunderbolt. Descend. 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 Pour out thy love, O Venus, onto the earth. And now a radiant pink pathway of beautiful light is pouring down upon the planetary body, spilling over into this focus of light. It is pouring out to the west, to the east, to the north, and to the south. And the channel is open. The love of the Kumaras will continue to pour. For 17 days, 
we will rain our love upon the earth. And at the end of that time, we will evaluate it. And if by cosmic law, it becomes the will of the karmic board, we will furnish another 17 days of cosmic light magnificence onto the earth. If it does not, we will cease and desist for the time being. But that which we have sent forth has been granted by the karmic lords. And the fire star of Venus is beginning to pulsate now with blue, with violet, with pink, with the purity's radiance. It resembles a giant sparkler as scintillating stars are pouring forth from the center and mingling and co-mingling with all of the color rings. The beauty of that descent is indescribable in human words. It must be witnessed by the inward consciousness to be understood. Now the light increases. Now we step it up. Now more energy is pouring down. And now the angels of the holy Kumaras are gathering round about the triad and the star. And they are singing. And all of the little electrons are beginning to dance. In the descent, the electrons are dancing. Open your hearts. Open your hearts. Open your hearts and receive this light. Open your hearts. Open your hearts. Open your hearts and receive this light. Open your hearts. Open your hearts. Open your hearts and receive this light. Feel the purity flow. Feel the pink glow. Feel the love increase. Love that flows through your cells, through your whole being. Does it not tend to wash out resentment? Does it not tend to wash out fear? Does it not tend to wash out doubt? Does it not tend to increase faith? Does it not tend to increase awareness? Does it not tend to direct into your being? a sense of the liniments of the divine form of the Christ forming within you in the magnificence of himself. Well, precious ones of the light, how marvelous it is that you are able to understand. I would want to say then to you, we want to increase the beauty and perfection of the light always. We want to increase the beauty and perfection of the light in everyone. You do not understand from time to time how tremendous the negative forces are in their build-up to millions and millions of people. I feel therefore constrained to speak to you about the awful carnage on the highways. I feel constrained to speak to you about the emotions of people driving automobiles and pouring out resentment against others for oftentimes the mistake that they themselves make. I feel constrained to speak to you about the irritations of the world and the irritations of the marketplaces. The world is filled with it, and each irritation that exists there becomes a negative focus that often goes out as a grid and force field into the world and from time to time becomes a disturbing effect in the minds and beings of others. How many times people are destroyed by the thoughts of others, tramp thoughts that floating through the atmosphere enter their mind because they are receptive to it. If they would always keep their mind upon love, if they would understand the power of love, if they would understand the power of grace, of the divine yoga, if they would understand this and keep themselves completely oriented to the grace of God, do you suppose that they would be troubled by these little trivial things? that occur in the world from time to time? I think not. For you see, beloved hearts of light, the true devotee of the Spirit does not want to exist in a state of vacuum. The true devotee of the Spirit does not want to exist in a state of hatred. He does not want to exist in a state of doubt. Mankind does not enjoy existing in a vacuum. They want the light to pour out upon themselves. Oftentimes when they become irritated and angry at another, it is because they are really angry with themselves. 
And so many times they do not understand that they are only adding to the weight of their own karma. For every idea and thought of negativity that flows forth into the world against another becomes a weight and a cudgel against the one sending it forth. The whole idea then is to forsake the habit of exercising those strange human prerogatives and begin to exercise the divine prerogatives in its place. And then you see the great muscle of the brain, the great muscle of the feeling world, the great muscle of divine love springs into action and the whole body of that individual becomes a manifestation of the divine will. When many of this kind are banded together in cosmic service. What do you think it means? It means an electrifying experience. It means the electrifying experience of divine joy. I would like the angels of joy from Venus to start at that side of the room and then create great ripples of joy in this section over here and then begin to come in like the waves of the ocean into this room here and then passing through this room head over into this room to my left. Watch then, angels of love, angels of joy, angels of the cosmic miracle power, radiate into that room and let the ocean of divine happiness as a nectar fill the hearts there with God's bliss. Let bliss increase. Let bliss increase. Let bliss sweep. Let bliss come forward. Let bliss come into this room. Let bliss come forward. Let bliss move. Let bliss live. Let bliss sweep. Let bliss rejoice. Move. 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 Bubble over the hearts. Let the hearts feel the great divine champagne, the great cosmic joy, till the whole soul can laugh within itself and all of the outer circumstances of the world and understand the great love ray that God pours upon the world, a divine experience, a cosmic blessing, radiating, comforting, sweeping the consciousness into the lap of God. Oh, divine mother, divine mother, Divine Mother, take these babes in Christ's arms and transfer them to thy lap. Hold them close to thy heart of light and let the diamond shining mind of God confer peace upon their mind. Let their hearts infused by the fire of the Divine Mother feel the compassion of her outreach. Let their bodies and beings cease from pain and doubt and all negative conditions and let the abundant life exist in them and grow as a seed into a root condition till it takes hold in the very subconscious mind of their being and permeates every cell and thought. Let it expand as a plant into the glow of the cosmic sun. Let the radiance of our planet particularly enfold the earth and all of the students of the light everywhere. Let grace abound. Let grace be magnified. Let grace rejoice. Let joy be without containment. Oh, beloved Terra, how long did I hold thee in my embrace? O oh, beloved mankind of this world, how long did you sing to me and to God praise as the ancient of day? How long then must I be the regent, Lord of the world? I cannot forget thee so long as thou lovest God nor can Venus, so long as thou lovest the sacred fire, and understandest clearly that God is the author of your faith, the eternal Father, Mother, Son, Holy Spirit consciousness, infusing all with the banner of hope, 
and caressing on with a kiss of his peace. to the future, and as we examine the fabric of the world's current manifestations, as we perceive how ignorant men, like puppets dangling from a string, are themselves deceived and being employed in the deceiving of others. We are aware of the solemn moment in history when freedom must be guarded or be lost. The battle is yours. We will aid you in every way that we can. We have escaped through the spirit from the prevailing dangers of the flesh. But those today bound with you through human discourse and ignorance of the higher law require aid in this moment of peril. And we know it. We know it full well. We are aware because the heart cries of even the children are heard by us in higher octaves. We are aware because those who have served our cause for many a year are themselves disturbed by outer manifestations. In past times, 
because of the images humanity hold of the ascended masters, it probably would have been a little better for us to have performed according to the images they hold of us and therefore to have provided the fullest aspect of comfort to humanity and said unto them, danger does not exist. There are no perils in the world. We will take care of it all. Rest secure in this moment for God is in his heaven. All must be right with the world. But I think I feel the need to pull off my glove, to cast it down, to say to you in all cosmic honesty, the battle is not as successful as we would have liked. We are not affrighted at our octave that it will be lost, but we feel that a more than ordinary peril exists at the present time. And we would countermand the forces of darkness. For every evil deed that they do, we would to God that men would do two good ones. Thus we might move forward in so far as humanity are concerned. Those called birds of a feather continue to flock together. And sometimes this becomes a means of deceit. For when men are standing in the camp of the faithful, they do not hear the gnashing of teeth of the wolves in the dens of darkness and iniquity. Those who stand in the dens of iniquity, hearing the gnashing of teeth, the rattling of sabers, and the determination to accomplish their ill-guided ends, are quite confident that they are going to win. We would do nothing to breed overconfidence in our people. We know that eternity is long, but while men and women are stymied in pools of stagnation and doubt, then, beloved ones of the light, they are often in a state of semi-despair, and we are not able to produce the fruit that we would normally produce for the same expenditure of energy. As I come to you today, however, I am aware of a few things that you are not aware of. I am aware of things that you ordinarily do not think of. I am aware of the history of other planets of other civilizations, of other ages, and the responses of the hearts of the people in similar situations. And I want you to know that whereas I do not have that supreme confidence that can certify unto you, yes, you will win this year, or next year, or the year following, I can certify unto you that if even the few that are here would exert their maximum efforts on behalf of freedom, that we could give the world a resounding whack from which they would scarcely recover. This may come as a surprise to you that so few people could so badly or so well affect the world. But if you will look back in the pages of past history, you will clearly see that the few have often commandeered the many. And again and again, these few have successfully won a battle. Now the battle for the minds of men currently going on has become, may I say it, 
very dirty. Humanity today are not playing fair but foul. And by all the standards of the craft of light, they are very foul indeed. But then, what do you expect from them? Look who it is that they serve. Do you expect that out of the spider's den will come walking saint? They are behaving according to form. The question is, are you? I do not come to condemn for the keepers of the flame when they have functioned sincerely have maintained a mighty vigil on behalf of freedom across this land and throughout the world. But then the armies of the enemy are very large, well supplied, well fortified, and the bows of iniquity are always being bent by the archers of darkness. They are legion. They are million strong. Whereas only a few hundred hold the world together. Yet I remind you that upon the heart of this planet rests a ball of infinite fire from the heart of God. That from this great planetary heart goeth forth strands of light substance into the world that this light substance connects the hearts of all humanity into one web of beauty. I would remind you that this beauty is also a symbol of strength. I would remind you that there are millions and millions untold among humanity who are what we term benign souls sons of God in embryo. Their hearts are like children and in their child hearts they believe and trust that God will deliver them from evil. Their eyes are mercifully blinded to many of the laws and functions which you so clearly see. Perhaps in your heart and shall I say, also in your ignorance, from time to time you feel that the secret of God's success upon earth is to implant in their beings the higher knowledge. And I believe with you that this would aid our cause. But there are times when you place within their hands the knowledge of the sordidness of the world only to find that they lose heart first in the world and then subsequently in you and turning to disbelief will doubt that all of the threats now imperiling mankind really do exist and the dark ones come to their mind and like ostriches they thrust their little heads into the sand while their hearts are nearly sobbing or breaking with shock that humanity are indeed in such a sorry state. You see, precious ones, all that seems so simple is really not. There are many complex problems facing hierarchy. The problem of ignorance is one of the worst. Yet, when we seek to dispel it, there is always the problem with humanity that the problem itself will seem so terrible that their minds will refuse to accept it. And of course, we would not want any of our students or any among humanity to dwell in the thought of darkness or negativity. But certainly he who is forewarned is forearmed. And therefore, the dilemma or the plot thicken. The solution is so difficult. Yet, in reality, it is most simple. For if all would accept 
the infinite love of our Lord and stand in support of the holy principles of freedom, the entire matter would be solved instantaneously. But it does not become so easy when individuals are divided in their thoughts when one group of people think one thought and one another. There is no unity then amongst those who agree together to preserve the fate of the world. They agree together to preserve the fate of the world, but every action speaks of division. They agree together to preserve the fate of the world, but they are turned by trifles into enemies. Shall we then advocate the darkness shall have fellowship with light. I am sure you know the answer to that one. But the problem is not easy. Hence, as I come to you today, it is with a heart full of awareness of the complexities of the problem. And I ask you to pay homage with me to our liege Lord, the living Christ. And see that the light of his presence scattered abroad across the margin of the world can well provide the fan flame of pure love that will inundate and overcome all the problems of humanity and enable them to put away their weapons of destruction and trust in the eternal to afford them a solution to the current problem. Quite naturally we do agree that the knowledge of man's intent must be spread abroad. I refer here to man's vile intent, but it must not be dwelled upon, for we must see to it that the positive actions we will take in the world will counteract all of the negativity that threatens freedom. Build men up in Christ consciousness and they will not be touched by the minions of darkness. Build men up in the mind of God and the mind of Satan loses its appeal. Build men up in an outreach for cosmic Christ accomplishment and they are not so concerned with temporal goals. The whole matter then becomes solvable when viewed from the standpoint of a most positive approach, an outreach into the world that while mindful of the darkness in the world and the threats to freedom, impels the forces of light to move forward and will not for any moment be affrighted by the forces of darkness with their smut, pornography, and shadowed concepts, which in the current age seem to have almost overwhelmed man who would otherwise be innocent. For I believe that childlike innocence can be preserved to any age, and I believe that it is the best fortification that any man or woman can have. Childlike innocence may sometimes suffer as a result of the depredations of the hypocrites of the world and the deceitful of the world, but it will always have eyes for God. It will always find a welcome from his heart. Let those then who have maintained the sweetness of childhood innocence rejoice that they have done so. And let those who have lost their innocence rejoice that they can also lose their guilt, their shame, their misery, their unhappiness, their thoughts of unreality, that they can become identified with the light of God that never fails, that they can by the sword of the Spirit cut themselves free from the relentless beat of sinister strategies upon their beings, they can find sweet release in God. We are concerned then not so much with the threats against freedom as we are with the mighty power that could 
with one breath overthrow the dragon and all of his cohort. Do you understand exactly what I am driving at? Do you see clearly then that you must fear no evil for God is with you. His rod and his staff will provide not only comfort but the manifestation of the blazing fires of reality that are the flame that you must keep. And when you keep that flame, I tell you, it will not be content because of its expandable nature to rest upon its Lord. It will reach out to consume darkness, to push it back, to spread a canopy of light everywhere and to provide the wholeness of renewed hope for all humanity. I trust that this little glimpse I have given to you will be helpful to you. That you will see that all of the ugly images of the world need not be remembered. God never <coughs> sullies his mind with them. The ascended masters do not touch them. And when the keepers of the scroll are required to examine the record. They do it with fingers of fire that leave but a smoldering pile of rubble where the records were. They consume them and they are stored in a most special cylinder where they are only used in times of judgment. And they are written in such a hieroglyph as no man can decipher save the keepers of the scroll. And the code is changed from time to time so that even the evil appears to be good because this code is a marvelous code that I shall not explain in detail except to say that evil is never remembered in the consciousness of God. And when we have accomplished that which we would accomplish for this planet, all of it shall be cast into the violet consuming flame, never to be any more. We have no desire to perpetuate evil, but we thoroughly understand that men today must understand that when evil threatens freedom and threatens to take away the hopes of the world, then act you must. You must act in the part of wisdom. You must act in the part of knowledge. You must act fortified and strong. You must act courageous. You must be willing to give all of yourself for the cause. For only by a complete sense of surrender can the world truly be saved in this hour of peril. There are so few today who understand that which this fraternity understands. There are so few blessed hearts that have the slightest idea of the intensity of these threats. And I want you to know that the nation of America could be taken over in 14 days to the shock, the utter shock of millions of American people. We have seen the plan for a 14-day takeover, which would in 14 hours have accomplished its basic purpose. We want you then to understand that only the bulwark of cosmic light protection from the ascended master's octave can stay the hand of the sweat. Will you then, as you ponder upon the seriousness of this matter, recognize that we do not need in many cases, to spread the full scope of knowledge that we have given to you, to the entire world. It is enough if this segment of the fraternity will accept it as a responsibility for you, precious hearts of light, to keep the flame blazing for your brethren in the world and for all humanity. And remember that we have a secret core who know nothing about the fraternity, who know nothing about the brotherhood, who know nothing about mysticism, 
but are in many cases simply individuals with small jobs or great jobs, with small knowledge or great knowledge, with age or with you, who have an inner tie to me and an inner tie to many of the devotees of light in the higher octave. Because of this inner tie, they will respond inwardly to the ministration and service you render as you make your decrees and prayers. In the fullness of faith, I tell you, they are your friends. They do not know you, but they are friends of light, ascended master friends of light. I will raise them up all over the world in defense of the principle of freedom. When the moment of truth comes, they will come forth off of every hillside. They will come out from amongst men and they will stand guard for freedom. Do not then be shocked or surprised by your enemies and the enemies of light. For I tell you truly, they will be surprised, the enemies of light, when they see how many will stand with us in the moment of travail. For freedom must not perish from the earth nor from the hearts of mankind. And I believe that through a great invocation of light unto God, we can, in this day and age, counteract the forces of negativity. But it can only be done by valor, by intent, by determination, by putting first things first, by putting the keeping of the flame above all other activities. When this is done, you are truly then one and all knights of light, ladies of light, servants of the Most High God, children of the Son. O oh, Infinite Father, who by thy love has guarded the principle of freedom as thou art the living truth, we invoke thy power and thy majesty this day and age for humanity. We pray that the little childlike mind of the infant Messiah will be today planted as seeds of fire in the hearts of multitudes of the children of this world. Guard those sons of God and holy Christ children that shall be the bringers forth of beauty and freedom in coming ages. See that those today who are of age and those today who can understand the mysteries of life are supplied with every inward quality that they need of understanding, of consecration, of love and love's radiation, of the fires of truth, that none of these will be lost or part from the covenant of Asha, the covenant of purity. That none of these will go down in darkness or defeat. That all of them will be employed in the service of Archangel Michael and his legions. Eternally vigilant to guard the kingdom. Eternally vigilant to guard the mind of man from inundation beneath the flood of the vampires of darkness and the dragons of deceit. Our Father, remove banal images from existence and let all the light of the Christ from the cave of symbols come forth this day. And let that light from the cave of symbols and the symbols in the cave of symbols be implanted in the hearts and minds of all who are keepers of the flame, that the forms of God blazing there, the divine geometry, the language of the soul, shall give to them the necessary implements by which they shall successfully defend freedom against all enemies. We stand here 
you stand there. We shall guard here. You shall guard there. But God is above as he is below. And I say to all of you, wherever you go, know that you, by his grace, can keep the flame blazing brightly over the earth and the hearts of men. That in moments, indescribable moments of darkness, when hope seems to have fled from the hearts of men, you may replenish that hope by being a sunbeam of cosmic Christ illumination wherever you are. Will you accept this charge I give you this day? Will you accept the fires of the Spirit and the mission of the Christ? Then I say to all, so be it done. For it is not by strength of words alone, but by strength of heart's resolve it is not by strength of thought alone but by the depth of God determination which is already embedded within you as his holy will flow with the stream then and not against it as humanity are doing today they shall find themselves those children of darkness cast upon the rock scratched and broken. You shall find yourselves as you already are, fortified by the rock of Christ identity. Through identifying with him and with us, you shall live in the abundant life, sealed unto God and protected from harm. This is God's will for all. We shall initiate them in due course of time. One by one they shall come forth and pass before us. One by one we shall confer upon them the grace God has given to us. One by one you shall march forth. One by one we shall move toward victory. Stand with us then in this high pledge and know that with God all things are possible. The light of God never fails. Will you repeat this with me as I close? The light of God never fails. The light of God never fails. The light of God never fails. And the beloved, mighty I am presence is that light. And the beloved, mighty I am presence is that light. Peace and victory unto you.
they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. But they who discard the opportunity for renewal shall wait. The hour of inflamement is at hand. The silent ones shall speak, and the speaking ones remain silent. Life will turn upside down and inside out because life will reveal the contents of the hidden scrolls. From the housetops, the proclamations of that which is done in secret shall be made. And many shall blush in shame. And many shall be shaken. And the fire shall try their works. And in the midst of the fiery trial, will come the coolness of gratitude. And gratitude shall rise from faithful hearts. And the hearts of the unfaithful shall tremble. And the light of the morning shall be seen in the evening. And the light of God shall vanquish the night. And there shall be no more darkness, for everywhere light shall prevail. Greetings from Darjeeling, from the Council of God's Will. Greetings from the Supreme Council of God's Will. Peace be unto you, and recognition of the flame within your heart. Let the little children tremble in joy and let the aged quake. For behold, the exactness of the law shall require of every man according to the measure of his knowledge. To those who have been given much shall much be required. And to those who have been given a little shall little be required. Yet there is the requirement of progress and those who have denied themselves the opportunity to progress, they also shall feel the chafing bit. The time has come when the children of God should cease to be foolish. They should exercise their lives in the discernment of cosmic worth. Cosmic worth within themselves and cosmic worth within others. Why will ye tarry? And why will foolish men and women to whom the teaching has been given continue to let their tongues wag loosely as though they were bolted in the center and flopping on both edges? I tell you the time has come for constrainment of gossip, constrainment of vile words, constrainment of darkness. The time has come when the children of the light should perform a daily ritual an exercise in consecration. Men are concerned with concentration. Let them now then learn the art of consecration. By the fires of consecration, we will summon a conflagration that will sweep the world. For every heart that becomes a mirror reflecting our light shall also add to the beauty. Remember, precious ones, the breaking of the pictures the sword of the Lord and Gideon in this day and age, the children of God shall once again become the sheep of his fold. They shall hear his voice and they shall follow him and it shall be no ordinary exercise in perception and discernment. It shall be an exercise in reality. And when I say to you that the little boy to whom Christ gave the loaves and fishes sits amongst you in this audience, then I say to you, there are many discernments that can be made and we could easily open the trap doors and expose the old images 
as you played various roles acting upon the stage. But in many cases, we have chosen to conceal these matters. In others, we have chosen to reveal. No one is able to predictably direct our actions, for they are directed from a higher source, and we act according to the best principles, and we are concerned with the fires of the heart. We are concerned with the kindling. We are concerned also with the cooling of the fires of emotion and the congealing of action when congealment is necessary. We are concerned with the awakening of the children of the dawn, and we are concerned with the sleeping ones who must be awakened. We are concerned with many things, but above all, we are concerned that the hastening ones shall heed the cry of the great shepherd of souls who calls them to come to the feast of light, to consecrate their energies in a subtle flame of great beauty whose point is a cutting edge to separate the chaff from the wheat, to separate darkness, to burn darkness, to consume the ego, to reveal the whiteness of the divine image reflected in their being. Moria awaits and darkness tarries. Mori awaits, and light is born as a tiny bubble in the bottom of the sea. It becomes a splendid radiance. And behold, the whole subterranean world is lighted up. But the interplay of nature continues. And men, some full of eyes, are constantly gazing upon phenomena whereas others are looking within to find the seeds of light within themselves. Some men gaze without and some men gaze within. We are concerned with the development of the highest spiritual consciousness. But this does not come to the slovenly. It does not come to the slothful. It does not come to those who in human laziness refuse to exercise and discern. Discernment is the fruit of the soul as it is applied to the law. Men should understand clearly that the law wears many disguises, that these disguises themselves are often not known. Shall I commend you? When you engage in sniveling, I tell you that sniveling is definitely an activity of self-pity. Yet men will engage in it and expect that the whole world should come to them in their synthetic sorrow. I tell you that we are not about to become concerned with discord and dissonance, with man's foolishness in wasting the time of the ascended masters, in wasting their own precious time. If they are not interested in burning darkness and creating tapers of light that will aspire to the highest recognition in themselves, then let them not waste their own time let them engage in the pleasures of the flesh and reap swiftly the penalty that will come. For we are not in need of souls. Men who have souls are in need of us, and they need us most dearly. Yet, they seem to expect that we shall always be available the exact moment when they want us. They will seek us out in their own good pleasure, but they do not understand that we too are governed by law a law that is higher than ourselves, whereas the law that they have established is only the law of their own being, a law that they have made immutable and in direct opposition to the gathering together of the children of light. Why do you suppose humanity today are suffering the returning currents of karma swiftly dumped upon them? Why are they barely eking out a spiritual living why are they barely discovering the gems of reality, seeing the fields are literally mined with the treasures of heaven? And yet men come up with all of their panning with but a teaspoonful of liquid gold when they should even in any day fill a great cloth with a weight they could scarcely carry. This is because they do not expect to receive they expect that they shall receive as they have given, 
and it is a precious little that they have given to the light by comparison to the great spiritual wealth that is within them. They expect that God should ever stand at the door as though he were a servant and that when they beckon and call, he should come. But they reckon without the activity of the wise lords of karma. Is it not written that those whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth? Is it not meet then that those who ignore the deity and come to him when they solely have a world need should also find that he will hide himself most surely from them because they have trifled with him as though they were playing a game of cat and mouse manipulation. We are concerned that individuals shall recognize the seriousness of the day in which you live. Vanity is everywhere and the ego is constantly displayed. We observe the students of light from time to time as they exercise the ideas of vengeance against one another as their puny egos flash forth the fires of resentment. We are aware of the miserableness of human nature that will fawn in hypocrisy even upon the messengers in some cases and then behind their backs utter curse words against them as was done within a fortnight. We want you to know that this is a very serious business, that you are engaged in a great struggle for recognition of the deity within yourself. Yet, we hesitate to scold because we are aware of the enormous amount of love that has been directed at us. The whole matter is one of the deity himself being ignored. Men are willing in many cases to make more of us than they make of their own divine God presence. And this is not pleasing to the ascended masters nor to the angels, nor to the cosmic beings, for all of them have their greatest rejoicing in the fact that humanity will offer from the very depths of their souls their full and complete adoration to their God presence. This is the way to emancipation. It is the way to freedom. Why will you tarry then along the rocks and shoals of outer personalities? Why will you take your time to criticize the action of those who are serving the light? when your own lives in many cases are but shambles? Why will some of you come here with the idea of searching out and discovering for yourself, if you can, some fraud in these blessed messengers? I tell you, dear hearts, that we are aware of every activity of every individual. Discover the fraud in yourselves first, and then you will find the means to eradicate it. For I tell you that the light of God that never fails is the most penetrating light. And if we would, we could expose publicly the names of those who have heaped insult after insult upon those who have nobly given their lives and their energies to God for his glory and whose every thought is the manifestation of the kingdom of God upon earth. Dear ones of the light, if you will be wise, then be wise. But if you will be foolish, separate yourselves from us, for we will not even sully our skirts much longer with those who continually try the very patience of our souls in the ascended state by professing to love us and then in secret doing those things which are great despot to the very purposes for which we serve. I tell you on the eve of freedom, I am concerned with the emancipation of the ascended master students of light. I am concerned that they will pay homage where homage is due. And certainly the activity of the Summit Lighthouse founded many years ago, deserves today to receive the tribute of humanity and certainly the tribute of those students of the light who have been the benefactors of every prayer uttered by those here in the heart center. Every prayer uttered by these messengers and every prayer uttered by the ascended host in answer to their call. Beloved ones of the light, the time has come for glaring honesty and I must reveal that until there is a spirit of absolute unity within the student body, it is extremely difficult for us to secure the necessary cosmic grants to cause the movement to flourish the way we would like to see it flourish. Therefore, the only alternative left open to us is in due course of time the open exposure and expulsion of those who are dishonest with us, who are dishonest with the messengers and dishonest with themselves. 
I tell you, we will not hesitate to separate from this movement those who have a spirit of disgrace against the messengers, against the activity, or against themselves. We will not hesitate because in the past, when we have separated the cancerous part of the body and exorcised it from the body, we have watched as the whole body then leaped into beautiful health. We will do it again if necessary, and we will continue to do it until we have purged the body of God from all that is darkness, deceit, and shame, and until we are able to lift up the body of God as a whited action of divine purity that will send out light rays into the world, beckoning men to come and drink of the fountain. And the fountain is within yourselves. How can bitter water then and sweet water proceed from the same fountain? If you would follow the pathway of the elect, if you would follow the pathway of the Christ, it must be, in some cases, by the heaping of ashes upon your own head. I tell you that many today among humanity, to put it plain and to put it blunt, are dumb jackasses whose every activity is against the spirit of divine perfection and truth that gives them breath and life. You may wonder why I will say these things unto you. I say it, precious ones, not to wake up the God within you which is already awake, but to wake up that recalcitrant human action of mortal ideas and to cause that action to sublimate itself to divine grace that is within the force field of your lives. Throughout this conference, you have been blessed with enormous patterns of radiation. You have been given assistance almost without limit from the masters of wisdom who have spoken to you, and there has been a balm of Gilead poured out upon your head. I, therefore, true to form tonight, have come to you carrying a whip in hand, and I am determined to exercise it, and I am determined to cut you free from those cancerous activities that always bear fruits of darkness. I want you then to humble yourselves, those of you who deserve this end, every one of you know those to whom I am speaking. I want you to humble yourselves before God if you wish to go on, if you wish to progress, if you wish to be a part of the vanguard of light, or otherwise I shall recommend to the karmic board, and I want you to know that my recommendations have never been disregarded, that you shall be expelled in less than 30 days from this activity. And I will see to it that it is followed up. And I tell you, you yourselves will be the great losers when you find yourself cut off from the radiance of the masters. For surely we will turn our face against those who insist on having their own way and letting their human person function with all of its discord and all of its jangle. The human, precious one, should be put beneath your feet and the God self raised on high. Then you would not have to worry. But precious ones of the light, this Darjeeling trailblazer remembers how many times the mountains have been strewn with the carcasses of those who have made a noble beginning. They took all of the necessary equipment for the trail. They took all of the necessary equipment to climb the highest towers. Yet, almost with the first challenge to their lives, they rebelled against the rigors of the journey and they decided that they would rather be back where they started from. Well, precious ones, it is so easy to slide back, so easy to slide back where you started from, which is nowhere, and so difficult sometimes to climb even a little hill. Will you not then recognize that you have a responsibility to accept the pressure of the light that God has already given to you, that you have a responsibility to manifest the beauty he has already given to you? I tell you this is true and is no lie. It is then an action of the first ray that brings to you tonight the awareness of the great cosmic blessings which you have received throughout the years in some cases. And God's mercy has shone into your hearts. And God's mercy has even prevented humanity from knowing some of the evil deeds that some of you have done. He has actually shielded some of the students of light and protected them so that their deeds were not known by men. But I tell you, I shall not much longer see that this is done, for we ourselves of the Darjeeling Council will within a short time be making our recommendations to the karmic lords for the dispensations for the coming year. And when we do, one of the things that we are going to do is call for the weeding out of those students of the light who have for some time now been actually sapping the energies of their brethren and sisters in the light. 
because they have become more or less parasites. Through self-pity, they make a more than ordinary drain upon the life energy of this planet. And through self-pity, they are always creating self-justification for all that they do. They ought to be on their knees. They ought to be calling to Almighty God for mercy and assistance. They have been taken in to the great vanguard that is moving forward into the light in the Summit Lighthouse activity. And yet, what is the result of all the blessedness and all of the bliss that has been poured out upon them? It is to utter curse words when they ought to be uttering praises to God. Some of you may be surprised when I tell you this, but I tell you if I opened the Akashic Records for you tonight and allowed the voices of those people who have done this to come forth, you would recognize their voices. You would know who they are, and they sit in this house. Understand, therefore, that the time is come when we shall shout from the housetops the very names of those people who insist on doing these actions, and we will purge the activity from them, for this activity is going forward to become a light to the youth of this nation, to show them the way out of their current dilemma, to return to them a proper understanding and evaluation of all political matters, of all religious matters, and bring to them the highest fruitage of the spirit that they may be able through beautiful music, through beautiful thought forms, and through beautiful service unto God to once again open up the glory and light of the everlasting hills. When the glory and light of the everlasting hills floods downward into the plain, humanity will then find in this activity and in all activities of light that the beauty of divine union is a compassionate beauty that overlooks the flaws and faults of men and expects them to do the same in return. Your job and role is not to criticize and condemn one another. Your job, your role, your opportunity is to confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that you may be able to overcome these faults and find the true blessed light of overcoming active in your lives. Then I tell you, the angelic host can step through the veil and commune with you and bring you such blessings poured out upon you in the highest measure that you have ever imagined within your fond hearts could ever be your own. Will you then accept the words that I am speaking to you tonight as the words of immortal and everlasting truth? Will you understand that as soon as I have finished speaking to you and you have taken into your hearts the thoughts that I have uttered, I am willing to burn the scroll. I am willing to burn the scroll of all seeming criticism from our octave by the power of light. I am willing to call for the forgiveness of everyone who has made this mistake, of everyone who has gossiped either about the messengers, about the activity, or about other members of the activity. I am willing to cast it aside. I am willing to bring forth the violet flame, the purple flame, and the flames of God purity and purify your hearts as with hyssop. And you shall be clean. And you shall be pure. And I am willing and hopeful that you can go on in the bond of God victory and obtain your victory, stepping up over the stones cast in your pathway and determining that nothing shall deter you from the victory of the will of God. The will of God is beautiful. The will of God down through the centuries has been a retaining wall that has sustained the momentums of purity for humanity. Yet, again and again, humanity has ignored the blessings of God, the protection of God, the purity of God, and they have brought the censure of heaven even from such magnificent beings as your own Mother Mary. I know full well that when the great ascended beings come to you and speak to the messengers and praise you, when they bring messages of great inspiration and hope, you are all hands. You are all eyes. You are all ears. You are waiting to receive these blessings. But when we speak the truth, it is sometimes a cutting sword that enters into your consciousness and does not always fill it with such joy. We want you to understand that just as there is a time to be joyful, there is also a time to weep. And I am now in the mood when I believe that it is more essential that you might weep in some cases and those of you who do not deserve to weep Please understand, pray. Please understand, pray. Pray for those who have despitefully used one another, for those who have not practiced the principles that this holy order stands for. I tell you, your prayers will be heard, and we will swiftly bring forth the actions of the lords of karma 
And these individuals will be tried before the higher tribunals even while they sleep at night. And some of them will be visited in dreams. And they will find that it shall come to pass that every word that I have spoken shall be fulfilled in their lives. And those with whom we cannot communicate and bring the direction that is the purity of the light into their lives, then I tell you, we will turn our backs upon them and it will be many a day that elapses before we turn our gaze upon them once again. The time has come and we shall answer the cries of the many of mankind who have never even had the opportunity of hearing these words, who have never had an explanation of this law. Do you think then that we should continue to waste our energies, our admonishments, our instructions upon those who choose to ignore them and turn to listen to the whimsy of the human voice of human nonsense as it seeks to produce the substance of decay in their worlds? Well, I think not. And I am just about ready to wash my hands of those who do so. I am ready to shake the dust of the earth off of my garments and say farewell to them. I tell you that we have been patient with the students of the light. We have watched as they have listened to the various records and dictations. Some of them have actually said in their hearts, I wonder if this is truth. Well, beloved ones, you do not have to wonder as to whether this is truth from the standpoint of examining the truth therein. It is not a matter of the fact that these messengers have spoken it, that we have spoken through these messengers. It is a matter of the truth itself that has been spoken. You are able to discern the truth for the sake of the truth's own sweet sake. You know what is right and wrong. You do not need to be instructed. Many of you are parents. All of you have been parents in one embodiment or another. You understand how admonishments given to children are sometimes ignored. Well, then accept this which I am saying to you and understand I do it for the purging of the body of those elements which are discordant and inharmonious. I am not anxious to do this. In God's holy name, understand this. I am anxious to see all of you walk the golden streets and play the golden harps. I am anxious to have all of you as brethren in the highest. But I cannot accept the discord and deceit of the betrayers and traitors to the light that sometimes ensconce themselves as upon thrones right in the midst of the students of the light. And there they practice their whoredom against the purity of God. We will not have it. We will not stand for it. We will exercise by all of the power of the heavens this activity of all that is discordant and produces jangle. We are determined for purity to manifest. We are determined that this shall be the most beautiful body of the elect that has ever been upon this planetary body. And we are anxious to extend the borders of the kingdom of that election to the whole wide world that they may drink of the cup, the same cup of the Christ, which was served to you this evening last when you understood the beauty of the Eucharist. Will you then, in the full solemnity of this occasion, pledge me your heart Will you pledge me your heads? Will you pledge me your hands? I want from your hearts love for God and all men. I want from your heads his holy wisdom to guide your lives. And I want from your hands the service that the light requires in this day. And now the Darjeeling Trailblazer has spoken. And in God's name, all that I have said is for the sake of his holy will. Will you understand that? Will you still the wild beating of your hearts? Will you remove all fear? I come not to torment, but to set you free. And only his will possesses the fire of true freedom. It is the highest expression. May I bid you adieu. May I confer in my passing a blessing of the radiation of the will of God through your being. I thank you. Thank you.